Hello, this video is to help you better understand the Can I Graph You 2 Texas Instrument Packet. It's a um, packet about solving an inequality that has an absolute value bar. In this video, uh, we're going to look at number two. Number two says the absolute value of 1 third x minus 10 is less than or equal to 11. Now, in the packet, it demonstrates for us that to use this graphing calculator, we're going to take the inequality statement, the absolute value of 1 third x minus 10 is less than or equal to 11, and from that one inequality statement, we're going to create two other statements. One of them is going to be an equation, and that's going to be y1 equals the absolute value of 1 third x minus 10, and the other is going to be an inequality, which is going to be y2 is less than or equal to 11. So I hope you can see that the less than or equal to 11 is what we see here in the original problem, and then the y1 equals what's on the left side with the absolute value bars. What we're going to do is graph y1 and y2 on your graphing calculator. Then we're going to find their intersection points, and we're going to analyze the shaded region that has the line for y1 equals the absolute value of 1 third x minus 10. So we're going to go ahead and get our graphing calculator. We're going to turn it on and we're going to go to the y equals and in the first y1 we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in there uh, the absolute value bars which is math arrow right number one and in there we're going to put in one third I'm going to use parentheses so that this kind of um, ensures that the calculator is going to do the one divided by three first and then here's where you can find your variable button and then multiply by x. After it takes that product, it's going to subtract 10. And it's going to do that for lots of x's. And then it's going to find all its y's and make a graph. Now right here, we need to get this is going to be a less than 11. So we're going to go all the way to the left. And when we press enter, we get the options. And we, you gotta, you got to scroll down one and then get to the middle of the menu. And then you can arrow over until we find that less than or equal to. And then we got to arrow down again and then tell the calculator that that's okay. And then we're going to arrow to the right and we're going to put in R11. So remember what Texas Instrument Packet was explaining to us is that we want to know how to use the graphing calculator and how to graph functions, especially absolute value functions as well as others, and inequalities. So we have these in. Now usually we're told to do a zoom 6. And with the zoom 6, we get this graph. And if you can see, that graph doesn't quite look like an absolute value um, graph. We're kind of missing the corner. And it almost looks like we're zoomed in on a part of the graph. So how about if we go to Windows, and let's change our windows. Usually we leave the resolution the way it's set. But let's make this negative 100 and make sure you use the negative sign or the, uh, the negative button down here, not the minus sign, the negative. And put in 100. And then let's make the Y max 100. We're going to leave the X scale. Let's go by tens. And then we'll make the Y minimum negative 100. And we'll have the Y go all the way up to 100. And then we're going to press graph because we've customized the windows. So now we have that corner that we have uh, learned to expect with absolute value bars. And do we see now where they intersect and where it's shaded? So right here, the blue line crosses the intersection in between these X's. So we want to find those X's. So to find those X's, we're going to go ahead and we're going to press second, calculate, and scroll down to intersect, hit enter, and it tells us to pick our two lines of intersection. So there's the first one, and it looks like we're on the blue line. Yes, we are. And now it looks like we're on the red line. We are. And we do it again, enter. This is the third time I'm pressing enter to make the guess. And see that X point 
at x equals negative 3, that's where we intersect the blue line with the red inequality. And if I go to the left, I'm out of the red region. But if I go to the right, I'm still in the red region. In fact, if I keep on going right, I'm in the red region, even on the blue line. See, there's the blue line. Even on the blue line, I'm in the red region. So here's how I'm on the blue line. And as I go to the right, the blue line is still in the red region until I get to this intersection point. So let's find that intersection point with a second. Calculate number five. We pick the blue line, we pick the red line, and look at that x intersection point. That's 63. So when the x's are between negative 3 and 63, we have the solution set. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write x is from the real numbers, x such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 63. If we're going to write an interval notation, we're going to use brackets because of the equality bars, and we'll use a comma to indicate the points in between. I'd like to explore a little bit, what about if this inequality, instead of being less than, what about if this inequality was um, absolute value of 1 third x minus 10, greater than or equal to 11. Well, we can investigate that very simply on our calculators by going to y1. And let's just change this from a less than or equal to sign into a greater than sign, greater than or equal to. And I bet a lot of you can kind of predict what this is going to give us. And I'm going to use the same um, windows and look how our graph has changed. So there's our absolute value function. But look at what happens with the blue line. The blue line, it's only in the red region to the left of negative 3 and to the right of the 63. So for this inequality, which has a greater than, we would say the solution set is x is from the real numbers such that the x is are going to be less than negative 3 and the x is greater than or equal to 63. So a little exploration for you to see how these graphs, they differ and how they can help us find the solution set to a inequality with absolute value bars in one variable. I hope this is a good video to help you get more familiar with graphing uh, absolute value bars on the graphing calculator, which we'll do more in the future to learn how absolute value bars shift uh, when we uh, move the absolute value functions either horizontally left or right or vertically up and down. Have a good evening. Thanks for watching and look forward to uh, questions in class.